All right, ladies and gentlemen, so thank you once again for joining me. Uh, we're going to do a uh, overview on a problem that I'm having with the Casador golf cart. I have a surprising number of people who ask me about the, this thing. Uh, you know, I, I loaded a couple of videos out on YouTube just because it was sort of a new toy to me. Um, but there's a lot of interest in it because the uh, machine is uh, so inexpensive relative to the alternative. Uh, just real quick. We, uh, we only use this uh, cart, we don't play golf. Um, we typically use it uh, for the beach only. Uh, in fact, I've left it in beach ready mode um, and uh, just for the video specifically. Um, but let me explain the problem that I'm having and then we'll talk about what I did to fix it. Okay, the beach is about six houses that way. Uh, we only use this for, for beach cruising. We don't go golf or anything like that, right? What was happening is, is that we would go down the beach uh, about three miles or so and performance would start to suffer. You give it more gas, it sort of doesn't want to do that. It was stumbling a lot. Uh, I'm not even going to demo it because I'm not going to overheat this machine for a YouTube video. It was the last thing that I wanted to happen, right? So uh, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to tell you what I did to fix it. So the, uh, the cart itself uh, does not have a warning light on it telling you if the machine is actually overheating. It is air-cooled, which completely gets rid of any uh, complications with regards to like a water-cooled uh, uh, system, right? So that's all out. It's not getting enough air, and I suspected that it was overheating, but it was really my best guess. Uh, so let's take a look at it, and, um, and I'll show you what I did. You know, for this thing to breathe, there are only a couple places that you can actually do that. There's this sort of this venting up here underneath the front seat, and then the rest of it is is just sort of ancillary airflow, right? So maybe in the wheel well, uh, things like that. And when you're driving around down at the beach, I mean, even on a calm day, it's typically, you know, it's typically windy, right? So you would think that, hey, it's, it's got to be getting enough, and, you know, the the designers of this machine uh, took all that into account and it, it should be operating proper, properly, but it, it doesn't. So up front, we've got an oil cooler up here and um, again, its placement implies that it is getting enough airflow and that all this air is slipping up underneath the machine. Uh, still, uh, it was a best guess on my part as to whether or not we were truly getting uh, enough airflow to this machine. All right, so we've got this, uh, skid, let's call it a skid plate. I don't know what else to call it, right? But it's pretty flimsy plastic. This thing doesn't really do much for you um, other than make the underside of the whole whole business, you know, look pretty good and, uh, you know, hides uh, a lot of the plumbing and so forth that's run, running up underneath there. And you can see there's about 12 bolts uh, that hold this thing on. And uh, it runs the length of the machine. So stand back a little bit. You get a perspective on how that might fit up underneath there. Well, I pulled that off, right, and left it off, and then we went about using the cart as we, uh, as we normally would. Truthfully, it has not overheated since, or at least it hasn't, it's running hot, you can feel the heat, but it does not, uh, it does not start to uh, lose performance. It doesn't stumble, uh, you know, it, it's just getting with the air that it needs. So it's ironic that they would place this uh, up underneath here. You know, we're not four-wheel driving in this thing, right? And I'm not even sure if you were, you know, you hit a rock or something, if that would save you, but it, it's completely unnecessary. I'm throwing that thing in the trash. I'm never putting on this machine again. It operates pretty much flawlessly, although you can feel it getting hot at that two to three mile, you know, marker, depending on the ambient temperature and so forth. Now, we haven't, this is Texas. We haven't been in the 90 degree stuff yet. Uh, we're in the mid 80s so far, but, uh, I don't know what I'll do if I start to encounter problems, but um, there, there you have it, an overheating Casador golf cart. Uh, and this thing it just seems to be doing well with a couple of exceptions, but I don't think it's any big deal. Uh, I, I, you know, it's like kind of what you would expect, right? All right, timing was all off. Uh, now that guy's gone by.